here, Anthony. These, they belong in the soil. Fish, they belong in the sea. Birds, in the air. But you and me, Tony, we belong in the everywhere. Kerouac called guys like us dingle doties. Kitchen confidential. You poured out the poetry of your soul, and that unlocked a door to your wildest dreams. And if a book is not a door, then I don't know what else is. You absorbed the souls of countless cultures. Camaraderie with fools and sages and everything in between. You saw more than most ever will. You inspired me, Tony. <laughs> God rest your soul, my friend. But now, it's time to fly, Wendy. And if you remember correctly, in order to do that, one must be happy, innocent, and heartless. I'm gonna need a lot of prayer if I'm gonna do that. security guard anymore. Trapped in a nine to five cage in the same town I went to high school in. <laughs> oh, God. I, I want to be wild. I want to be wild. I want to be wild. Wild. I want to be wild. Wild! I don't want to be friends with people that don't read books! I don't want to be friends with people that eat McDonald's! I don't want to speak English anymore! Gang, gang, get this in there! Decaying grip of the nine to five choked our stardust dreams into suit. But the line is drawn here, and it will be drawn in blood and flames! What is this I see? It must be a gift from God himself, a coat of many colors. Yes, this is who I am. It's beautiful. This will be the superhero costume of my destiny.
You're a dingle doty. Oh, you bring Kerouac then. I see. If you'll forgive me, I, I haven't talked to anybody in forever. That, that, that's interesting. And I, I work like 80 hours a week as a security guard, but that's, that's all over now. I'm just, I was like a ghost, a ghost in a room. I, I didn't do anything but work and sleep and talk to the moon. Well, it looks like time has finally found you. My name's Blaine. What's yours? Actually, call me Wild Eric. Glad to meet you, Wild. Well, I, I actually went on a spiritual journey, man, so I could grow spiritually and creative. It's a spiritual journey? It's a trip of faith. I went to Memphis, man, just to be homeless. Memphis? And it turns out God didn't want me to be homeless, man. I ended up meeting the right people the first day, and I ended up standing in a board house. And you're a musician? Yes. You, you gotta show me your guitar. I gotta see this. Well, sure. You don't mind, right? I don't mind one bit. What kind of guitar do you got? Well, this actually came from my great friend, Rachel Hammond. Oh, okay. And she let me borrow it for this trip. Wow. She has a place wow. called Scale Street Music. Willow Creek. I'll, I'll carry this for you. Hey, yeah. Ben, yeah, what, what do you say we walk down the track a little bit? That's fine. I believe we're kindred spirits. Do you believe I found this robe in the forest? Really? I found it in the forest. I quit my job today. I couldn't take it anymore. Man, would you believe I found this body? <laughs> laying on a train somewhere and I <laughs> snatched it up. <laughs> hey, dude. Yeah. I ain't really had no human connection in a while. Give me a hug. Oh, man. These yeah. are brothers from another man. country. We're dingle doties, man. We we dingle doties, man. Care running into the been. back of the wind. Yes! Yes! And, and running into the back of the wind and let, letting the Holy Spirit take us wherever He wants. Wherever to pray for wants, people. Man. To do good works. I just want to do God's work. When I was 14 years old, I prayed to God. I said, Lord, make me one of the great songwriters and let me bring people to you through my songs. And as a result, ever since then, Songs have fallen from the sky at different times. And I do not take it lightly. I have to get these songs out to the world. I was playing guitar in the street for some money, just busking. I didn't ask anybody for anything. And God provided for me. You know what, you're, you're a Christian too? Well, of course. I'm a believer in God, you know. I, I'm more about relationship rather than religion, you know what I'm I saying? I hear you, man. It's all about your relationship with your Heavenly Father. And my own mind has been good to me. The relationship with the Heavenly Father. And my own mind has been good to me. He's been good to you. He's been good to me. But in the same way, I guess I'm my own worst enemy. That's right. Each air that I breathe is a piece of you, a piece of me. We don't know where, where we're going. Sometimes it's better off not knowing. You know? And nobody would take that ticket. Everybody loved the idea of taking a free trip to Memphis, but they didn't want it. They could stand the idea of possibly being homeless. Mm. You know, yeah. I was trying to be homeless, but, there's so but much God you didn't learn. want me to be homeless. God didn't want you to open. No, his, wow. his grace he found me a place to stay. And I was troubled when I found the place to stay because I was like, is this actually going along with my mission? And I was like, no, it is. Because God brought this to happen and that to happen. I'm telling you, everything was just synchronicity after synchronicity because I don't believe in meaningless coincidences. Coincidences being meaningless? No. I always find meaning in them. Absolutely. And Elvis and I know. Buddy Holly. I mean, come on. Man, I felt the spirit of all that came before me go through me. Man, it was like a jolt of electricity, man. It's got to be something heavenly, I tell you. It's gotta be, man. But yeah, you know, I prayed before I went out there. Amen. 
and and us meeting all the right people and all the wrong people kind of just stayed away from me or I stayed away from them. Great job. You know? Yeah. And uh, along the way, I decided no more hitchhiking because only perverts pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> That's something I had to learn the hard way with a locked door and a gun pointed at me. <laughs> I laugh about it now, but it wasn't funny when it happened. Fuck like that, man. It's like a Hitchcock movie. Well, with the right shadowing and the right fat bald man, I suppose it would be. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, I tell you, a lot of people, see, I used to have bought two tickets. and. Uh, well, you know, I play a little bit, too. Really? Yeah, I'm a singer. Maybe we could do, you know, some stuff. <laughs> I, don't, I always know you I, up to song. I don't know where these tracks go, but maybe God put us together to follow these tracks, to follow our dreams, to do His will, to make amazing things happen. Well, we can follow these tracks a little bit further, but we'll go down the side road if we want to meet some people. Well, there's a lake down there. There's a lake? There's a lake. Yeah. You know those swimming? Well, I just, the water's good. Hey, I just want to be around the water in general. How about that? That sounds good to me. All right, Aquaman. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, so tell me all about Memphis. Well, in Memphis, I met a homeless man. Been playing for five hours on a hot street. But I guess, I guess, since you asked so kindly, I would be pleased to give it to you. As long as you wash my feet. So, where'd you sleep in Memphis? Well, like I said, before you cut me off, I ended up making a place in a boardroom. A place called the Green Bill. Whoa. That's awesome. the oldest tavern in Memphis. Yeah, how old was it? And it was right next door, right next door, to a hotel that charged $85 a night. Are you serious? So every two days I would pay $25. And I would see. Your question Did you meet any beautiful women in Memphis? I had to keep my eyes off women just so I stay focused, keep my eyes on the prize. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. That's great.
I know what I hear, and that is someone playing guitar. Yeah, key of G. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Man. Look, this is a sign. We're supposed to be here. Whatever this place is, it looks really nice. That's right, man. No, they get the American. What is this place? We just have no idea where we're gonna end up today, you know. And I feel like God is leading us. Oh. Look, I found you. I found you because I heard you playing music. And then we happen to be hearing music again. That can't be a coincidence. No, there are no coincidences. There are no coincidences. Go contract. No coincidences. Go coincidences. Look, man. But what is God is, brought man. us here for a reason. Hey, this guy must be. This must be a sign. Maybe we should Everything go. Everything has meaning. Listen, we go over there. We introduce ourselves and see what he has to say. You're Just listen to what he. Right. It sounds like somebody's playing acoustic guitar. Like over there. There's a guy that looks like Johnny Bravo. <laughs> what in the world? He's like Elvis, except dude, Cobra Kai. He is the next step. He has soiled. We can just trade. That's disgusting, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, all right. You can't use my toothbrush. We, we need more prayer because this is gross. You can't use my toothbrush. I don't believe it turned this way. <laughs> you everything? Man, God leads the way. How's my breath, though? Uh, look, 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 how about the, can I borrow the, the toothbrush you're just using? Can I borrow your underwear? Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, it's, it, yeah. A message for us. Okay. You know All, right. I mean? All right. Can, can I borrow that toothbrush? No, it's my toothbrush. Well, I mean, yeah, we're friends now. Not that close. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was kind of part of the goal. But if we go in this really nice place, I want to have fresh smelling breath too. Can I borrow your toothbrush? I mean, look. I'm a little... No, no, no. What does the Bible say? If he asketh, giveth unto. If you loveth your brother, give it unto the toothbrushing. When you're, when you've got faith in God and you're following that spirit. It leads you, it guides you. Amen, man. Totally. And this you, guy, well, it's Yes, and then next year, I'll give you mine. All right, here you go. We, we meet in the tracks once again. All right. Because, I mean, you know, those train tracks, they All go right. both ways, but man. But I want to see you brush your teeth right now. But with... I'm going to do it later because I like and to do it. Guy, you say you... the prayer, and then you walk out in expectancy, and anything can happen. <laughs> this is a blessed day. This is a day... So much different. Your breath smells yesterday. a lot better now, I've noticed. In, so in private, you, you know? Look, between me and God, like, I brushed the, the teeth for you today. You brush up and down, you're yeah. supposed to do the swirls, man. No, uh, you're supposed to do it like this, and then like this. That sounds a little perverted. No, it's, you're just, you know, you need prayer, brother. <laughs> I've got it for you, if you need it. I know where you get some good He looks like Elvis, he looks like Elvis and Peter Cetera. You, you, don't you see him over there? On steroids, He looks man. like Johnny Bravo and Jack Black to me. No, not Jack Black. Not Jack Black. Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera. Elvis, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. And steroid use. And, and maybe served two tours in Iraq. That's what he looks like. But listen to his playing. Isn't that masterful? I mean, well, look, you're missing the point. You see over there? There's a big blonde PTSD looking mother hump. Uh, 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 shouldn't be cursing because, you know, we're Christians. There's a weird, it's almost it as is. good as you. It is. It's almost as good as you, man. Man, Jack Black can't even play the guitar. He, he needs that Why'd other guy. Would you leave guy? Jack Black out of this? He's overweight. Well. <laughs> I'm gonna jump it, I'm gonna jump it. Hold the, hold the toothbrush, it's too much weight. If I, if I have the toothbrush, okay? Here we go. Jump a uh, train train carts. Can you jump a fence? Okay, I'll hold this. I, yeah, I'll hold the toothbrush too. It's too much weight. Too much weight with the toothbrush. <sighs> Come on, Blaine Ziegler. Dingle, don't extraordinaire. You can do it. No, no. That was better. I think I jumped it like. Look, uh, do you see that guy over there? I can smell America coming off his face. We need to go talk to him. That guy is America. And pray with him, maybe you know. Oh, hey, man. He's got cords to show us, man. Certainly. He's got those mega, uh, like, spaghetti fingers, you know? He's the next step. 
So you're you're like more like noodle, Asian noodle fingers. He's more like the American spaghetti fingers. Oh man, we gotta we gotta collaborate the Asian noodle with the American spaghetti. Mm. And what we get is some type of fettuccine Alfredo mix. You know what I'm saying? If this were a movie, this is where you would cut it. Well, if this was a movie, I wouldn't choose you to be in it. That's for no. You would choose me to direct it because you are, you know, like all actors, brain dead. Okay. <laughs> I'm just a puppet. Well, I mean, I, you know, if that, you ever hear that song by Tom Jones, "The Mexican Puppeteer, Taking Over No Fear." <laughs> a little young Mexican puppeteer. You never heard that song? It's a real I, song. I have not heard it. I didn't, but, make, I didn't make that up for today. It's a real song. But I'm afraid of those little dolls and Puppet Master, man. The one that drills Dude, you. you cast out the demons out of the puppets in the name of Jesus. You say, a little puppet would freak. But then it won't walk Come on out its of own him anymore. Come out of him now. Hmm? But then it won't walk on its own anymore. The young Mexican puppeteer. I like Casting demons out of no fear. He takes a blade and takes some wood. Oh, thank God for your freedom. If this was a sequel to a movie, it should never be greenlit. Never. Put back in the can. Never. Put this That's movie right. back in the can. Turn it off, man. You're mm. wasting your time. You know, unless you are brain dead yourself and maybe this is something you'd like to watch. <laughs> okay. Man, what is, what is this place? It's so nice. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm great. It's, I, 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 this is Eric, and this is Blaine. Hi, Eric. Hi, Blaine. And uh, nice we, listen, I quit my job today, and I was walking the train tracks, and I met this guy, um, and, and he's a musician from Memphis, and the path brought us here. What, what is this place? We're an assisted living facility. Assisted. Li we assist. That's what we do. The Lord brings us to assist people. We're out there. We, we heard somebody playing guitar on your, on your porch. Do you know anything about that? No, no one's been out there playing today. Wait, nobody's been out there? We, we just saw a guy out there, blonde hair, big yeah. guy, stocky, playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. So, you guys have bathrooms here? Yes. Okay, because we need that, unless we can't, we won't perform without bathrooms. Okay, it's our, bathrooms. It's, our, it's our backstage. Okay. okay. Uh, I've been following the Lord's leading, because I was working 80 hours a week, and God was just like, hey, quit your job and leave it to me. And I, I ended up here. Did you hear what she said? We, what did she say? We're going to do some performance here, man. This is Blaine. She, she just asked, do we want to play here? We can play here? Yeah. Well, how much would you charge us? Today is free. How, like, I, we don't have to pay anything? No. Okay, great. And can the cl deep clean advance? So, I think that's my phone ringing in my pocket. All right, let's do this again. Can we talk to maybe some of the residents about their, their lives and stuff? I'll ask around. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Well, All right, high, thank high five. You. Thank you. I, I don't What's believe, your name? Can, Shannon. Can you Shannon. believe how nice they are? Okay, I'm Blaine. Hey, Blaine. How, why, nice to meet you. How, 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 why are they so nice here? This is amazing. Look at it. It's just happy right here. So that must be the right place. That's why we're here. Oh, for, Pharrell owns this yeah. place. I love it. You guys are really equipped. Any way I can help. Just let but me. listen, here's the thing. But you don't... Music is my force. Who was that man on the porch playing guitar earlier? Because we heard someone playing guitar on the porch. So that's why we came over here. There's been no one on the porch today playing music. Do you guys have no, music Don't here? argue with it. I mean, it ain't worth arguing about. I mean, we know what we saw, but you know. What is this place anyway? We're an assisted living facility. Assisted living. Well, we give assistance. Yeah. What kind of assistance? Well, we're we're Christian people that we play music for. I just for like to help. You know. Yeah, I just met him on the train tracks. He was living in Memphis for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, agreeable she was. It's like we came in here and did the Jedi mind trick on her. I, I don't understand how we were able to even do this. It's no mind tricks necessary. You want to go, listen, She's let's, let's go to the bathroom. Hospital, let's go to the bathroom. Lady. Make She's sure we're cleansed. I want to like be cleansed right. before the show. Go to the bathroom, get cleansed, and then we can perform with no, no, like you're singing a song and all of a sudden, oop, oop, I have to go. Yes. You don't want that. You don't you want, want that. You want to be ready. And you know, I know I can't sing as good if yes. I have a full tank. TMI, for sure. Okay. You're going to need a key for that, sir. <laughs> well, do you hire people to, to play shows here? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. I mean, you have this happy branch here that's this happy. So, I mean, I, I would assume, being that we're happy people, that you'd want us here. Do you have any requests? Like, you know, throw mama from the train, give me a crack corn. Oh, man, you got me on that one. You don't seem that interested. <laughs> Think you should Are you on Zoloft life. today? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be napping. All right, we're going to get ready. We're going to get ready for the show now. Okay. We appreciate okay. it. And we want to talk to some of your, your residents here. Okay, I'll make that happen. Okay, because we, we love people. 
All right, I'm looking forward to this. Let's do it. I'm, this, this is, I can't, this is God. Going. She, she helped me. She's just here. No, you won't. How are you doing? Good afternoon, residents. Please join us in the lobby for a special music presentation starting now. play music at home and it's nice to be able to share music with people and also my belief and my faith in Jesus and I will now read you a scripture from the Bible in 1st Corinthians 13 4 through 8 it says love is patient and kind love does not envy or boast it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Amen. How many of you are familiar with Psalms 23? Well, I'm going to take you there. And I'm sure you all remember the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He may give me lie down.
right tonight, or are you, you going to sit this one out? This is my friend Blaine Ziegler. <laughs> commandments were to love God with everything we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. But we can't do that unless we pray, for it's only with his strength in us that we can do the work of the Lord. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, so we should live our lives as a prayer. And now Blaine will read from Acts 3.12. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this 
surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? Because obviously it was the Holy Spirit which all of the believers can call on. So we can all do what they marveled at Peter for. Exactly. Exactly. What I felt was powerful about this scripture is Peter makes it clear it's not by their own power or by their godliness. And sometimes we think we can't pray for someone because we're not perfect. You see, it's not by our godliness that God works. It's through surrendering ourselves to God and having faith to obey Him. By loving our neighbor as ourselves. Love someone enough to pray for them. Ask them. All they can do is say no. And if we learn to pray for each other more, all things are possible. And today, after our presentation, if anybody would like prayer, we'd be happy to pray with you. Oh, certainly, certainly. And I have to say, um, God has certainly humbled me throughout my life. Life is a humbling thing in general. Um, and I'm grateful for it. You know, there was a lot of false humility in me that I was guilty of early on, and I didn't realize it until I was actually humbled by life. And uh, a few years ago, my dad passed away, and it's not until certain key figures in your life pass away that you realize a part of you dies with them, or yet has the potential to go with them. And uh, because we see a reflection of ourselves in the ones that we love. You know, so I just, I just thank God that, that I have a relationship with him, that I actually have faith. I talk to people who don't have faith, who don't have any type of relationship with God and they have grievances against God, but yet they don't believe in him, which seem to contradict one another. Uh, but you know, really, we're all brothers and sisters, no matter what the uh, differences are in doctrine or anything like that. And we should never let any of that separate us. You know, it doesn't take much to connect with somebody, you know, just to relate with someone. You know, um, we all have very similar lives when it comes down to it. And without further ado, our friends, our friend Franz is here, and uh, anyway, thank you all for listening to me. I very much appreciate it, and uh, yes, God bless you. Thank you so much. Tell you guys what had the had the devil come against me, trying to be here with you today. There's oil coming out of my car. One window won't stay rolled up. GPS told me the wrong coordinates. Didn't know where I was. And you know what I found out? If I just stop and I pray about it, he'll create the light that'll lead your feet and put you exactly where he wants you at the exact time. I had a friend call me while I was uh, in the midst of wondering where I was going and where I was in Greensboro. Cause I'm gonna tell you guys what, I don't come to Greensboro much. And uh, a friend called me, somebody I hadn't spoken to in a long time, and uh, he was able to shed some light on a couple of things, and, and I had that time to speak with him, and it, it was a blessing. And then you know what I found out? I was right across the street. <laughs> How about that? How do I ask you for forgiveness? No, I don't deserve any favors from you. And I lay broke. My Heavenly Father, Yahweh Salah, we come here today and we spread your word and your joy and your faithfulness. And we, we put this forward, Lord, because of the Holy Spirit that's within us to share the good message and to share your word. And I pray, I pray for the health and the well-being and the safety and the 
just 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 the, the happiness and the joy of everybody that's in this room. Amen. In your heavenly name, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I found the microphone in the last one. You see how that worked? I was over here talking and oh wow, there it is. Where do I go when I reach my simple questions, man, and I'm going to give you the floor because uh, I think the world needs to know. They need to know about you. Uh, could you tell us your life story? Well, I was born in son of, of a Protestant a Methodist minister, and my grandfather was also a Methodist minister, so I grew up in, in the church. And uh, going to church, you know, three days a week, and uh, uh, seeing the Observing the activities of my father growing up, uh, he led me to Christ. Amen. And uh, in 1956, I gave my life to the Lord and have followed him ever since. Hallelujah. Yay, God. Man, praise the Lord. I, uh, we traveled from, uh, to Illinois, for my father went to Evanston, uh, Illinois, to a seminary. And when he graduated from that, we went to Portland, Oregon, to a big church, inner oh, city wow. church. Okay. And he was a pastor in there. After that, we moved back to Tennessee, and uh, I spent I spent my high school days in Tennessee. I was born in Tennessee, Man. so I'm a Tennessee volunteer. Tennessee through and through. Absolutely. <laughs> big Orange country. Volunteer state. Uh, so I volunteered to join uh, the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York. I was selected to attend. Oh, wow. Uh, That's an honor. And graduated in 1967. Class of 1967, we had our 50th reunion uh, uh, about five years ago. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, so how was, how was the Army? The Army was great. I spent 20 years in the Army as, a, as an Army Ranger and, and field artillery officer. Man. And uh, I, my, my, my greatest thanks that I give the Lord in the Army was I commanded a, a unit in Vietnam, 400 men, and you know there was a, the number of KIA, KIAs that were mm -hmm. over there. Yes, sir. Deaths, deaths among the troops. Yes, sir. 85,000 or 87,000. I, I, I did not lose a man. Every night I prayed to the Lord that I, uh, to protect and You didn't save. lose one man in your battalion? And, no. Uh, and every day the Lord answered that prayer. We, we got wounded from attacks, but no one went home to be buried. Everybody went home intact. To God be the glory. Yes, to God be the glory. So I got a young told with that. 
and no other accomplishments in my life. That's outstanding. I mean, that, that must, that, I can't even begin to imagine uh, that time or what that was like for you, but. Uh, it was a hard war to fight because uh, it was politically yeah. inspired a lot of and, and we were, our hands were bound in some things we could, could not do in battle. Yeah, they, they wouldn't let you guys go over the border in the Laos, would they? No, we were on the border though. Yeah. My, my unit was on the border. I was the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment. It was commanded by George S. Patton, Jr. Junior? Yeah. Oh, man, how about <laughs> looks that? Just like, looks just like his father. The way I know that is outside the library at West Point, is it United it? States Military Academy, is a statue of his father. <laughs> and his son looks just like his father. So he's a, yeah. a walking statue. I've yeah. seen you I'm before. There and <laughs> oh, goodness. So uh, so you survived one of the most difficult wars in the, the in United States history. Um, and a war of attrition, many call it. Yes. And, but the Lord led you, he led you men, he led you home, and what, what happened next? I came back to the United States, to the uh, Field Artillery Center at Fort Sill and uh, took command of the uh, radar division, the largest training division at Fort Sill. We taught uh, uh, officers, NCOs, and warrant officers things to do with radar. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, from the maintenance side and from the operational side. So... All the ins and outs of uh, radar and the technological advances that come yes. with where we are today. Uh, That's right. Probably a lot of them were tinkered around or figured out in, yeah, in your unit. When I got there, we were using radars that had been around since the Korean War. Oh, my goodness. But uh, I introduced, I brought into the training base the new Firefinder radar, okay. which was uh, totally uh, uh, innovative, transistorized. Oh, uh, wow, okay. Electronic uh, circuit boards and so on. So, what they had before the transistor, I mean, and these other radars? Vacuum they, tubes. So, it was, it was all vacuum tubes. Yep. Man, he, yep. probably a lot bigger than the yep. units today, man. Yep. That's Fill right. up a whole room with them. That's right. <laughs> the Firefinder is still deployed today. Okay, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And, uh, I, and I, I retired. <laughs> I retired in eighty-seven. Nineteen eighty-seven. So that's been a while. Man, thank you for your service to thank our you. country. And thank you. My for privilege. Man, man, may the Lord bless and keep you. So, uh, so, so you, so after after you retired from the army. Yes. What, what, in eighty-seven, what, what's your take on life? I mean, how's uh? I, I was asked by a. Uh, a stamp, I, I'm a stamp collector, and uh, I was asked by a stamp dealer from Europe, the, the largest uh, postal history dealer in, in uh, England, oh, wow. to uh, head up his North American operation. Okay. So that's what I did when I retired, became a stamp dealer full time. We did exhibitions all around the country and in Europe. So I imagine they got some stamp shows, yes. You know, I, I've got. That is funny. I, I, have, so, I have sold that recently, that stock, but uh, that was 30 years. Man, that's a long time to be uh, It's nice to make one's hobby a, a, a job and a vocation. I tell you what, um, I'm going to switch gears with you, and sure. uh, I got this piece of paper to my good friend, and he thought long and hard about these questions, and he really just wants to, he wants to know your take, sure. like your your values, your take, and your opinion on these questions. So sure. I'm, I'm going to steer it to this. Is What are your feelings about romantic love, and do you have any advice? I feel that when it's the right thing, you'll know it. I, I, I met my wife, who's a North Carolina girl. Oh, yeah. We live in Burlington. She still lives in Burlington. I grew up in Burlington. Really? Alamance County. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, she comes and visits, of course. Uh, she's still able to, to do things at home, totally okay. medications and so on. I'm on a lot of medications, so they're here to manage that and, okay. yeah, yeah. and my meals and so on. Probably, probably good to yeah. have a, assist, assist, a staff. Assistant, though, yes. That's a, they're very good here. This is a, 
Top notch. Top notch uh, facility. Man, that's really great to know. Uh, We're at the I, carriage house in North Ham Street. I met my wife at my first duty assignment out of West Point. Okay. They wouldn't let you go. I volunteered for Vietnam. But you volunteered. Yeah. And man, that's that's they, kind of unheard of. <laughs> they wouldn't. Uh, you don't. Uh, Tennessee volunteer. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's like, you, you, uh, here, here am I, Lord. <laughs> yeah. But I met her at my first duty station uh, in uh, Mar uh, February 1968. I was graduating in 67. Went to Ranger School and so on. And Man. Then, uh, Outstanding. Then to Fort George C. Meade in Maryland. We were there during the Martin Luther King riots. Oh, wow. He was wow. assassinated in, in uh, April of 68. Mm. And uh, they deployed my unit to downtown Washington, D.C for riot control. They were burning down Everything. Uh, the, the, yeah. the tenements in Washington. Man, State. yeah, the, the whole society. Because of the, 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 the assassination. Man, so that was uh, some experience. Do you have any advice for like, for the younger generation, for this super fast world today when it comes to romantic love? I, I think you just don't, you don't, don't push trying to force relationships. So when is let, it real? Let, let the Lord provide. Man, I, you got to have trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I appreciate your answer on that. All right, third question. Um, what are your feelings about God? I think we've pretty much covered that, but uh, just as is, what is your feelings about God? God is great. God is everywhere. God is... The, the source of our strength yes. and has a plan. Hallelujah. And we simply need to ask his guidance and provision, and he will provide it. And we have to have that, the faith that that is true. That's it. And Hallelujah. Yeah, we, so we have to be well all these years. I mean, we have to be usable yes. by the Lord. And the only way we can be usable, I believe, is, um, is through repentance, through humbleness, yes. and through leaning on it and having the ears to hear him and the eyes to see him, which is yes. a gift from him that he gives you. Just, amen, it's such a pleasure talking to you, sir. All right, what's the secret to living so long? Well, I'm, I'm 77 years young. Ah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the secret. <laughs> that's awesome. Just take each day as a gift. It is a gift. To, to, to wake up each day is a gift. And another opportunity given you by the Lord to live in his way. That's, that's it. He, because moments come with choices. Yes. And he gives us the moments. That's a grace. That's a yes. blessing. But in those moments, his wisdom and his guidance through his word help us make the right choice, I believe. Yes. I'm glad I asked you that because I want to see what, you take, what your take was on that. All right, here's an interesting question. What are some strategies that you have to fight being depressed? I, uh, I actually am bipolar. Okay. Which means manic depressive. But sure. I'm, I'm on the, I'm more on the manic side. Okay. I, I never have problems with depression. I think the word, uh, uh, Who's allowed me to to go this long, and and to give me the medication to control my mania? That yeah. Is fast track. Fast track and kind of. Like, yes, sir. Your mind gets runs ahead. Yes, sir. That's what the mania is. Well, it's nice to meet you. I'm Bob yes. too. <laughs> I just don't subscribe to labels. I am what the Lord has made. Me. Yes. And uh, for His will and His time and in His purpose, I will be there, you know, and you're from a volunteer state. I'll tell you what, I'm taking a page from your book because uh, I, I hopefully I'm that faithful yes, sir. And when it comes to that time. And uh, just, wow, man, uh, that's that's the best answer. Is I love it. You know, we're asking, I ask a series of questions here. You know, we need to know, and uh, need to know your opinion on it. And yeah. well, God's at the center of everything that you've talked about so far. So I think that maybe we're uh, we're on a good trend here. Good little good little track. So, all right, here's a this is going to be a fun question. I, I really I, I can't wait for your answer. 
Um, but what do you, what do you, all right, let me ask this correctly. Do you believe in UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, or the supernatural? And do you have any stories to share? <laughs> I think there are worlds unseen in the universe. I think. And uh, that's for the Lord to know. It, it, would, it, it would seem with the universe as it is, and as we know how big it is, unending. I, I couldn't agree with you, Lord. Yeah. I could that, not uh, agree with you. I'm, I'm, I would think that uh, the Lord may well have uh, a number of worlds, maybe maybe in, in his maybe in realms, universe. yeah. Maybe. This is after all omnipotent. Yeah, yeah. this this yeah. is this is this reality, and then there's this reality, and yes. this reality, and there's maybe a so. That's I, I, I suppose that would, would would include what you would some would term supernatural. You don't have any stories that maybe uh, not really not really you have no. say anything. I mean, radar base, you know, you got <laughs> things in the sky and whatnot, you don't want to share yeah. that with other people. No, <laughs> no one but not had any encounters with the UFOs. Man, well, I'll tell you, well, look. But there are things that we just don't understand. Yes, there are. You know, not meant to, we're just man. We're, we're fallible and uh, yeah, our, human. His we're ways human. are not our ways. And, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, somebody told me a long time ago, is it, uh, yeah, the simplest thing that God's ever done is more complex than we can ever understand in a million lifetimes, because yeah. he is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. Man, Tennessee Jim, thank you Amen. so very much. Thank you. Very nice talking with you. Oh, very nice talking with you, sir. And uh, I'm going to give this over to our director. and. Uh, and we're, I think we're going to take some shots. And, uh, You're going to take some yeah, shots? No, no, shot, you know, it says, no, it says right here. That's not what I meant. All right, we're here with Carol. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm going to ask you some questions about your life. Now, question number one, could you tell us a bit about your life story? Mm -hmm. Well, I was born in Newark, New Jersey, when Newark was very different than it is now. And uh, <clears throat> I... Uh, I went to Newark schools, and uh, I, uh, I was one of three children. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents had lost their first child when she was two, and uh, it was kind of, I was a surprise, and my, my siblings were much older than I. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was seven, my brother was killed in the Second World War. Oh, no. Uh, to, he was a tail gunner. And it'd be oh, 17. Oh. So how old were you when that happened? Seven. Oh, seven. okay. Yeah. Right, okay. And he was 19. It was the day before his 19th birthday. Oh he had God. been in for a year. And uh, it was it was devastating to our family. And uh, two of our, they had a successful bombing mission over uh, Germany. And then uh, two of our planes collided over the English Channel. Mm -hmm. And it went down. And uh, I believe whatever is left of his body is at the bottom of the English Channel. Wow. And uh, there were survivors. They saw parachutes. And uh, one man swam to the French side and was captured by the Germans mm. and was a POW for the rest of the war. Mm. And, uh, but the other men that survived were sent out on another B-17 and were all killed. Oh, no. So there was only one survivor. I, I'm not sure how many there are in the, uh, there were in the squad. You now, after I mean? your brother passed, did the military say we're, we won't take anyone else from your family? Was that a rule back then? Uh, well, yeah, the, the Sullivans, that was, they, there were five of them that were killed mm. on, uh, in the Navy. Right. And my mother, who had an interesting approach to grief, uh, uh, said that she had lost all her sons because there was mm. a lot of sympathy for the right. Sullivans and I had a sister and a brother. So was this before the <clears throat> Sullivans or after that your brother was taken? I, I'm not sure. Mm, okay. I, uh, I, I'm not sure. But no one I, else in your family passed from the war? It was no, just, just no, your, just your brother. no, no. 
We had a lot of young dads. What was your brother's him. name? James. James. Jim. Yeah. James. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then we moved. Uh, we moved to uh, uh, Belleville, New Jersey, for a year, and then back to Newark. But Newark was uh, a lot of different neighborhoods. Right. And so we moved to the other side of Newark, which was entirely. I might have just as well moved to Ohio or something. It's just very different. Yes, yes. And actually and my... how was it different? Was it just different? Uh, more people, more, was it a better neighborhood, uh, worse, or? Well, it was, it, it was this, well, the, the neighborhood that I lived in originally was a very uh, interesting neighborhood, and my, and my parents had uh, <clears throat> lived in a house, a, a single family house in Nutley that uh, my grandfather and father had built. They were both car carpenters. And uh, and we moved to a three-family house uh, that they rent, if they rented an apartment in a three-family house and it was across the street from a factory, which, I mean, it must have been a horrible shock to my mother because she lived in this little suburb community mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. that. And um, so then it was a more modern part of Newark and it was called the Ivy Hill section. Previous to that we lived in the Forest Hill section right. and <clears throat> my father worked for the city of Newark. It was very interesting because um, he uh, was a carpenter for the city of Newark mm -hmm. and very often they ate lunch with uh, the craftsmen that worked for the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. And at lunch, uh, they would talk about the racism in this, and the inequalities in the school system. Mm, okay. And um, and that just, you know, some terrible stories they would tell. And I would hear this like at dinner time. And uh, so I was brought up with that. Mm -hmm. And then when I was, uh, the school that I went to was almost an elite school. It oh. was amazing. Now, was I that mean, on purpose from your parents? Did they pay for that? Or did you, was it? Oh, no, 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 no. It was, was a public the, school. Mm, but but they, it was a very they, fine one. Oh, yes. The, mm. the mayor's daughter went there. Oh, and there okay. was a Miss Beard's. Uh, what was it called? The high school? The, well, the grammar school oh, was grammar school. Um, Ridge Street School. Ridge Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that neighborhood, there were large, beautiful Victorian houses. Mm. And then there were the house that we lived in was a two-family house, but it was a large, also a large, I think it was a Victorian house. I mean, we had a butler's pantry in, that, in our, our apartment, mm. you know, and then there was an upstairs apartment. What's a butler's pantry? <laughs> it's interesting. It's, it's a um, space between uh, the dining room and the kitchen, okay. and it's fitted with cabinets, mm, okay. and it's you know, where right. food would be where the butlers would go. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, <clears throat> then we went, we, uh, I went, I, I attended high school. Now what West year, what year school. was it, if you don't mind me asking, that you were in high school? Like what year did you graduate? I graduated in 1953. 1953. Yeah, I'm 87. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's right. Well, I'm going to get there one day. <laughs> Hopefully um, we will. I, I will get there, there in Jesus name. <laughs> Yes. So, Amen. Can, could you tell me what it was like being in high school in 1953? Um, it for me, it was a lot of fun. What was the music uh, like, and was it like dating and all that stuff? And what did you wear? And uh, the music was. Um, it was Buddy Holly and? No, no, no. Not that yet. was later. That was later. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, Tony Bennett, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra. Um, there were uh, Bobby Darin. Oh, I know them. Uh, Dream lover. Yeah, uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I think I think Bobby Darin was in that uh, that time, and um, but I, I loved uh, Tony Bennett, mm. and uh, I saw Tony Bennett in the Paramount in Asbury Park wow. uh, about ten years ago. And it was magnificent. It was, I mean, he was so, I mean, he sounded very much like he did, you know, in the early years. Right. And, uh, and I always loved Frank Sinatra, still do. Oh, I love yeah. Yeah, Frank Sinatra, yeah. I do. Yeah. I just read a book on uh, Eva, Ava Gardner. Oh, yes. And it was interesting to see that side of uh -huh. the equation. Oh, yeah. Um, she was a beautiful woman. So, 
did you do well in high school? Was there was there bully, was there bullying back then? I mean, what was, was it oh, like? Did well, you go to the dance you know, and all that stuff? I was overweight, you know, I oh. uh, all through high school, oh. and uh, and so I didn't have any dates, but I had a lot of friends. Oh, that's great. And, and were you in uh, church and stuff or no? In church, yes. We I was Roman Catholic, oh, and okay. uh, you know, very. Uh, I envy uh, kids that were, went to Catholic schools, but I went to public school and went to, they called the catechism at the time on Sundays, and uh, you know, made all the sacraments in the Catholic yeah. Church at that Yeah, time. the Catholic Church is interesting. I have a few friends who are Catholic. I want to move on to the second question, which ties into your life. Um, uh, were you ever married? Oh, yes, and yes. So uh, what are your feelings about romance, and do you have any advice? and? What was your experience? Did you get married at a young age? I well, I was uh, twenty-four, I think. Twenty-four. And um, and I. <laughs> Where did you meet your husband? Um, we actually, uh, a friend and I went out for a drink after midnight mass on Easter, hmm. and uh, it was an Easter vigil mass. And then uh, we went to this bar, and, and he was there. He was playing pool, and. Uh, <clears throat> And we just, you know, met there, and then. Uh, What's his name? Bob. Bob. That's my mm -hmm. dad's name. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you met Bob at the play yes. pool. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, we we had one date, and he thought that I didn't like him, really? and uh, and I I thought he was cute, and uh, and somebody that I uh, a close friend uh, at at the time when. I started dating him. Actually, she said he's a diamond rough, which he he was. I mean, mm. he was um, he was a, a union plumber. He, oh. he was an apprentice at the time right. and became a union plumber. And uh, but he was just and he just snuck into my heart. <laughs> you know, he, he snuck into your heart. Oh yeah. Well, I, what did I, he do to win your heart specifically? Did he I bring you flowers he, or? No, no, no. He was. I think he was just him. Right. You know, but we, Genuine. We, we went. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. He he was funny. Oh. Had a good sense of humor. That always helps, right? And yeah. and very you know loving and caring and uh, and we went to the drive-in and uh, I uh, on like our third date I think it was and uh, it was January and he uh, he reached out to get the speaker or something and and when he came back in his hand brushed mine. And it was ice cold, mm -hmm. and I just grabbed his hand and took it in both my hands, and I, you know, all I was focused on was getting his hand warm, mm -hmm. and uh, and that was new and different. <laughs> you know, I mm -hmm. never would. It was almost like I guess it could be construed as making a first move really? or something right, like that. Right, you were just trying to keep and, his hand warm. He exactly. thinks you're making a move. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't think, think, think he thought that. Oh, I think okay. he just. I think he knew. Mm -hmm. You know that that. Uh, well, did he try to kiss you at the drive-in? Oh, well, eventually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, he, like, like the, had... That was like the, the, the tenth movie that he tried. Like, <laughs> yeah, many movies down on. the line. Do you but remember I... what you saw at the drive-in? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on because there's other people and I, I don't yes. want to be rude to them. Um, so what are your feelings about God? Oh, uh, I think God is very... Oh, well, Bob died when, when we were only married four and a half years, and my children were three, two, and oh eight Oh my God, old. so you were widowed? Oh, yes. Were yes. you married again after? No, oh, no. Wow. Okay. And, uh, uh, and my father had died 18 months before, oh. and my mother died four months afterwards. It oh was my, a, it was a terrible a devastating time, in life. time in life. How did you get through? With God. With God. Yeah, Amen. definitely. Amen. And, uh, and that's just increased through the years. Mm. I belong to a number of 12-step programs, mm. and uh, the uh, third step is you turn your will and your life over to the care of God as Amen. we understand God. It's, yeah, it's the only and, way. Uh, <clears throat> I, just, I have to tell you that yesterday I was uh, inclined to turn on the TV, and I, I know that I'm watching too much TV. At right, times, and all that, of us are. Yeah. And I really seek to know God's will, you know, and try to work God's will from moment to moment, really. And uh, and sometimes I'm pretty good at it, but never very good. <laughs> and uh, and other times, you know, not that not not nearly as good as I'd like to be. So I. Uh, uh, but I was inclined to turn it on, so finally I thought I'm going to do it. 
and um, it was just an average talk show. And one, they were, t but they were talking. There were two women, and they were talking about prayer. Mm. And uh, the one said that that a good friend of hers had told her that uh, just saying thank you, God, is probably the best prayer you can ever say. And she said that her favorite prayer is that this woman had taught her also is, um, I'm here, God, I'm available. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I thought, you know, and, and a friend of mine was saying, oh, that's a wonderful mantra. It is. You know, and, yeah. and I thought, yes, I, you know, that's what I, so I've been trying to do that. Right. And uh, of course, I feel that this is a gift. You're, you're being here, the whole group. and. Yeah, yeah, this is really just the Lord's leading in my life. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. I was watching a show called The Chosen, and in The Chosen, Jesus sends out the Twelve, and before the Twelve are sent out, they say, Lord, we're not worthy to be sent out. We're not ready. And he's like, I didn't, if I wanted people who were super righteous and holy, I would have went to the Pharisees or other people. I chose you, yeah. and it's not by your godliness. Just go out there and start loving people. Yes. You know? That's um, the story of my life. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great that it goes well, I together. I wasn't wanted pregnancy, you know, I mean, definitely. And, and my, my sister, you know, the, the way my parents handled it was not good. So mm. I've never been, you know, I was, certainly wasn't affirmed, you know, growing up in that. Right, that's and, tough. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, it's taken me a long time to, uh, uh, you know, I've used affirmations. And, right, um, so you're you saying know, that the way your parents treated you definitely affected your self-esteem and oh because you were uh, uh you, were, you said you were a surprise child yes okay they yes. were planning it and, and uh, they had gone through the depression mm. along with my father had a severe alcohol problem all right okay. and uh and my mother would say that other people kept well, their houses during a depression and they lost theirs i think you've really answered this question this question was uh what are your strategies for fighting depression you already said it's just the the, the god like uh, being in alignment with god yes Okay, and I don't mean to, to rush the yeah, well, the interview, Carol, but there are other people and stuff, so right. I, we have to get to that. But yeah. okay, it's now it's time for the silly question. Okay. It's actually not that silly. It's it's kind of out there, uh -huh. and if you don't want to answer it, you have nothing to okay. say, then that's fine. But okay, um, do you believe in UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, or the supernatural? And do you have any stories about it? Uh. No, but it makes me think of the Holy Spirit. Mm, I right. believe strongly in, in that. I mean, I feel right. my husband's presence. Right, so you're saying like just be, like we know that the, the Lord is real and therefore we know there's another side and we just need to be close to God yes. and be prepared for that. Yes. I understand that. I don't really believe in Satan. I, mm. I feel that Jesus has won the victory. Mm. And, right, exactly. You I, know, so... Right, the victory's already won, right. so we not even we shouldn't even worry about that other side because that's how Jesus has already won. That's right. a great way to look at it. And also, I believe that in Him there is no darkness at all. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. Satan's okay. pretty dark. So <laughs> my last question is: Can I can I pray with you? Oh, of course. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Or do you? We'll probably want to just do that off camera. We'll do that. Music. He gonna film what? Have you met Audrey? This woman is amazing. This woman is amazing. Yeah, buddy. Got a. Can you carry around or two? The Wild Harris Traveling Podcast Show is about to begin featuring Ron Shoring. Three different writers tonight and some jams. We're about to take it away in the key of G. What key? The best part is, don't, none of us know what that is. So let's start off just improvising. Everybody, welcome to a house, a very loud house, somewhere off the beaten path. Somewhere where dreams may last Somewhere tonight Let me ask you Have you ever been in love? Let me ask you Have you ever really been in love? I'm a man that wants to travel The whole darn world All in search of the perfect experience 
I hear a thunderstorm in the distance. It's time to break out the wires. I'm gonna go all the way to Norway to a little house by the sea.